unearthing the secrets of an abandoned home can lead to hidden treasures. All this space was just hidden behind the wall. Then again, every discovery comes with its own challenges. We do have a leak in the chimney. It rains inside the house, so we do need to fix that. And then there's winter, a true test for an old home. All of the walls are soaking wet. The heating system didn't work very well. It was costing an absolute fortune a month to run. What we're doing is we're taking everything up to put underfloor heating in. No, uh, I measured these, no! I just popped it into the caretaker's cottage because for the next few months it's absolutely packed with bookings, which is amazing for us, but we need to kind of like be popping in when we have a chance to do a bit of maintenance work. Just going to be resealing the marble tiles on the bathrooms here because we haven't done it for like three years, <laughs> which <laughs> I think you're supposed to do it every six months. But anyway, so it shows that they, they do, do last very well. This was our first cottage that we restored and is just well i'm gonna say it's one of my favorites but i always say the same whatever i am but it's just it's such a gorgeous cottage this is one of the bedrooms and it's already ready for the next guests we love to kind of give them a little lavender spray so they can spray in the in the pillows to sleep better and a couple of chocolates because let's face it we always kind of prepare them as we would like this is one of those cottages that we adore and we are very very lucky that everybody have stayed here they have always had great things to say about it maybe one of the reasons is that Dean and I have always prepared and set it all up as we would like to be received if we were paying to stay somewhere so attention to detail i think that is very important and um we love it it's just i love to kind of like really quickly take you around this is the smallest bedroom honestly it's just we you can tell that here the paneling we actually made a different design this was a very very start and we kind of went for like a bit more modern lamps here is a small bathroom um but you don't need anything else. We make sure that we exposed every timber. It's a great shower. We, when we were living in here, this is the bedroom that we used um, just because it's got a, he a beautiful aspect with the hydrangea courtyard. Look how stunning. Imagine all of these absolutely packed with white flowers. It's incredible. And then leaving this bedroom, we go to the next bedroom, but Look at this jewel, like height vaulted ceiling with all these timbers exposed. We designed these lamps and this was with Ikea, <laughs> Ikea uh, balls, you know, the glass. Um, we, we designed that and made it. And uh, yeah, this bedroom is incredibly big. Remember, this cottage is 600 year old. So it's an incredible, a super sized bedroom for for a cottage is old. And then of course we have got another bathroom here, which has also got marble tiles. I love these that we design here. This was basically just a normal bath. It wasn't very expensive, but we made this to try to kind of pretend that it was on a raised from the floor um but it isn't anyway i think that you you can understand why this is one of those cottages that you just love you hear it's got such an energy i just need to quickly seal the marble tiles because it's all been cleaned already we can just go straight away i don't want to be careful because I don't want, want to have to be cleaning this bathroom again. In Spain, we have so much marble and this thing of ceiling is a thing that I've only ever had 
here in England, you have to seal the stone and the marble. In Spain, we've never ever done that. And we have got marble in the worktops, in the kitchen. We got marble like everywhere and I've never seen any type of like stains or anything. So I don't know why it's the obsession about sealing, but I'm just doing what you're supposed to do here. That's what you've been told, so. to get like so much stuff done it's all the boring stuff that no one really cares about you know like all the electrics plastering that sort of stuff repair works the walls so i feel like it's just been non-stop these things need to be done before we even finish one room because when you do one room you need to start heating it otherwise you get bombed you get damp you know you know these houses aren't good to be left unheated yeah. winter is the worst for this old house because can you see all of the walls are soaking wet. It just builds up humidity on the walls because the walls have been painted with non-breathable paint, probably plastered as well with gypsum. And this is how we get this mold going. This winter is not good for this house. The house needs to be heated again, but we just haven't got round to doing the heating system, which is a huge, huge job. We're so overwhelmed by the main house because there's a lot of infrastructure we need to get in, yeah. which is costly. Yeah. So I think that we kind of like feel a lot more comfortable at the minute just transforming rooms that we know we do well. So welcome to the first room of the Dow House. This one is a really good example of what we're working with. There's nothing original. Unlike the main estate where we'll take up a floorboard and we'll find like a letter dating back to 1800, yeah. there's nothing here. We found some amazing finds across the estate, the main estate. So we found a letter from 1860, yeah. an old handmade whiskey bottle, flip knives, a business card of a plasterer, but the Dow House, we have found nothing, nothing exciting, just some notes. foul notes from builders from probably four years ago. Yeah. yeah, it's not something we're gonna treasure forever. You know what I'm going to do? I am going to create a letter with our seal, mm -hmm. handwritten, and I'm gonna put it through the, under, under the floorboard. You know what we should do? The Aunt Edith letter that we found. It says, my darling little Dickie and sweet Annie. I must write you a joint letter, for I have no time to write two letters this morning. And you love one another so. Ever your third most loving and affectionate Aunt Edith. Oh, it's cute, isn't it? We've already got a copy of the letter, and it's framed in the caretaker's cottage. In the caretaker's kitchen is where we have a copy of the Aunt Edith letter. We love that when people come to stay, they can read exactly what it says. It's a special part of this estate for us. The original we kept and we've put in a safe. So we could actually seal it back up, seal it in some plastic, like a plastic um, Ziploc, so it, it could protect it and put it back under the floorboards. And you never know, in another 100 years time, someone will find it. And finding a letter from 300 years ago yeah. is gonna be But amazing. I think we'll put it together with one from now. And I, it just could be like explaining our journey. Yeah, or explaining the letter, because we found out all about the letter. Yeah. So. And a bit of like what we did and how we found it. Yeah. And I think that if there is like a chronology of like founding that and then these two guys that probably they long gone but did everything that is, I mean, that, that will excite me Another so Another thing for the to-do list. Yeah, but that's exciting. <laughs> what we're doing is we're taking everything up to put underfloor heating in. The heating system didn't work very well. It was costing an absolute fortune a month to run. So <laughs> within the first two months, we switched it off and we had to switch it on again. Because we don't have any original floors, we're putting underfloor heating throughout. So it becomes a little bit more efficient with how it's heated. Yeah. This is a different approach to my tiny estate, my main estate. We have to add the character back in because all the character has been removed. The only thing we've, we've uncovered is the fire, the fire opening. There's, there was literally nothing inside. When we first started at the Dower House, we removed the plaster wall and discovered that the former owners had covered up an entire fireplace. And they did it in several rooms. Who does that? So we opened it up. Yeah. Also the beams were covered over, so we've exposed those. 
the windows will be replaced at some time. Cleaning out all of the floor voids, redundant pipes and whatnot. This was actually the area that I removed a macerator. Macerating toilets are used when installing a large waste pipe isn't possible. The macerator pump grinds waste and toilet paper into a messy sludge. They use a machine that pumps the waste up and out. Anyway, I was clearing out and I didn't realize that it <laughs> was pressurized. <laughs> just, it just exploded in my face. Yeah. Um, Borgia and his mom thought it was We hilarious. could not stop laughing. <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> it's exploded, it rained poo all over Dean and he screamed and he ran into the shower, it was so funny. Woo! Ooh, some of the uh, wood is, is not solid. This is where you come in, I can't. this space is a closet. Yeah, it's like, it's like a sort of like entrance hallway yeah. with a closet to the right. Exactly. So we bought this piece of furniture for very, very cheap in auction. Now Dean needs to make sure that very carefully he's cutting. So we're going to put that piece right here. So it's like we've planned it. This is a piece we got from an auction site ages ago and we've made it fits, snug as a bug in a rug. And then you come into the bedroom, the bed will go here, and then on the left, you have a bathroom. Yeah, so we're in the, the, the original, original part of the cottage. So the cottage would have just been two up, two down. So this would be one of the rooms. The other room's over there, and there's another two downstairs. And that's all it was. Yeah. But then in the Georgian period, they added a Georgian extension onto it, which has a totally different vibe. Yes. So, so we're going with it more cottagey vibe here, and then trying to kind of add all the Georgian detail. Um, so it's gonna be a quite nice mixture of the both if we get it right. But we're just stripping it back first and getting it back to a white blank canvas, and then we'll add all our layers. To yes, that. yes. process of installing the window architrave and over the years Dean has mastered how to do it. Spray on the one side, glue on the other side. The good thing is with this project is if you put too much on you can just wipe it off because as long as the applicator isn't next to it. And just like that then he's holding it and Done. And it's been how many seconds? I think it's like yeah, about it's three seconds. Second. But you, if you get it on your fingers, you can melt on a few of the fingers. Oh. Is I, it? I haven't mastered it totally because I think I've just glued it to like this actual thing. <laughs> no. Try and scrape it off. No. <laughs> we make sure that the corners is a nice tight corner. And then when we decorate and paint it, you can't even see it. Now we glue it at the back, then we will nail gun it. And then we'll have the other one to do. We just do this as an additional precaution. Ooh. It just suddenly just like dressing up the window, isn't it? So you can see we try to nail it in the grooves. Then if the nail hasn't gone all the way in, yeah, we'll I have changed, to. Yeah, I changed my mind. I actually think it's better to do it like that because ah. we can feel it better. That's a nightmare. Yes. And also it didn't tack in properly. Okay. So I changed my mind mid-process. We normally used to do it in the groove though. 
because the, the problem with that is you can split it though. Within. I like to live life on the edge. So another one to do, and then caulking and painting. Voila. Voila. Working for a bit tonight. I'm getting excited. I want to have a flow. I don't want to have to be stepping, you know, in each joist, trying to avoid to step through the ceiling. Got that section done. Need to carry on working on all of this section. Done along here, just need to fix that one here. And then we're gonna start laying the uh, metal grid. We have to route some areas, but we're almost there. show you how we install the heating coils once we tackle the bathroom. But for now, the coils are in. The next part is a little nerve wracking. Today is the day that we're gonna put the actual boards down, which is very exciting. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure I mark where I can not drill through. I don't wanna go through a pipe. <laughs> That'll be a disaster. That's going to be the plan. I'm hoping I can get the, the floor down today. Day two <laughs> of finishing the floor. I couldn't finish it yesterday. I basically left the tricky cuts until today. So you can see. Or maybe you need to prove it. What have I done? I think I got it wrong. Oh no. Shoot. Well, you see, that's why I left it for the last. Oh no. That's the, that's the problem for doing it in the evening when I'm hungry and tired. It made sense last night, but now I'm like, there's a big gap. I think I've done it wrong. <laughs> and I always say like, measure twice, cut once. I measured like 50 times. Oh no. <sighs> I'm, I'm laughing because I don't wanna cry. I think I can fix that. I'm not gonna say anything to Dean uh, and hopefully he'll never notice. <laughs> he will notice. Oh. oh my goodness, I thought it was gonna take me half a day. It's been two days. I had to fix few bits as I was going along. For some reason, my, my brain stopped working and then I was getting the wrong cuts, <laughs> but I fixed it now. So I'm gonna start painting. I'm so happy with the floor. 
We actually have a floor. And the colour looks really nice. And so you've got this colour on here, all these little details, and then the fire surround. The fire surround's gonna be amazing. Very exciting. He's painted all over the window, can you see? Yeah. Because um, we find it's easier to scrape it off after it's set. You know, to do a perfect edge on glass, it's difficult, so we do it that way, because it's yeah. easier. It's so cold here at the minute. So I've, I've found some insulation just to block the chimney up, and then we've got a radiator on. But this is this is our chaos as we're working because we do so many different things. We're doing painting now. We're looking at this. Borgia's working in the bathroom. We've got bathroom stuff here. I just noticed you haven't painted on top of the architecture. Oh yeah. <laughs> in the dar house, it's very very windy, and air somehow gets through everywhere. What we've done is, before we install the skirting wall, we've sealed everything and then we've taped the joint between the wall and the floor. If you wonder what that is, that's it's no screws in Spanish, just so no one goes into the underfloor heating. So I've got all of the skirting board that I need for all the sides and we've learned that the best thing is to paint them before we install them because you know you then don't have to kind of be super super careful uh, to the wall so we paint them really well a couple of times and then we install them and then we just touch it up once they're up. You can go to the sides without being scared. I've done two coats of this skirting board and it's time I feel to go back, have a shower and probably keep working on a sash window on the main estate because <laughs> they've been breaking. Borgia worked late, late last night to get all the painting done and it looks amazing. I think he said that he's still got a second coat to just do on the top section, but you can barely see. It looks so good. As soon as he's finished painting, I can install the light switches and the lights, which is definitely the exciting part. It's, what are you thinking? I honestly, not only I love it because it really just suddenly feels like the bedroom. The colors that we've made look freaking amazing! <laughs> <laughs> also, I look like one of these pop stars. I was gonna say, you look like an 80s Keep Fit instructor. <laughs> this is the light. There's gonna be a shade on it. And it's gonna look pretty. Yes. And obviously matching on the other side. What I love about Light, you can always change them, can you? Exactly. In the future. So this is going to be a light, light switch and a USB charger because everyone has to charge their phone. So I think the lights look really cute. I've still got to put the other see, one in. Literally, I've just seen how I look like in the mirror. I think I I'm like this. I know, you look like an 80s lesbian. <laughs> So the biggest thing that ruins our lovely clean lines is the smoke detector. Please, please can someone inv uh, um, invent a nice looking wired smoke detector? Because I can't find one anywhere. No, I'll tell you an idea. A smoke detector that you can paint. And it goes with your freaking decoration. Yeah, and we'll only take 10% of the idea. <laughs> <laughs> Look at these poles, right? I mean, some of them don't have the net, and then it only has the one, but look, look at the detail. 
Isn't this absolutely gorgeous? You will add character back on the dower house. So I'm gonna get a couple and I hope we can make them work. I think this one is the right size. It's not central, no? I can't see it from here. Mate. To the right. And I think we need to clean them up a little bit to expose a bit of the brass, but not too much that it ruins the look. Yeah. Kind of like that one down there. That one's quite nice, that colour. <laughs> you haven't finished the room, <laughs> but we're putting furniture in because that's what we're like. It, it, it gives us that motivation to keep going. So I'm here early at the Dower House. Um, I, I couldn't sleep and I didn't want to wake Bourgeois up. Um, so I'm going to surprise him and I'm going to install the light. I'm just going to wire it through now. And then I'm going to drive back home, pick him up and then show him what I've done. I didn't think I'd be able to install the light by myself, but I did and it looks really good. I just love those lights. They really fill out the space. Excited to see what he thinks. Wow! <laughs> I wake up early. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's amazing! Wow! Oh! Sit it on. Oh my goodness, it's just so. Oh. oh my god. So everyone is so obsessed with either staining or waxing or doing whatever you need to do to the beams, but if you don't touch them and they're up high, just leave them as they are. And all we do is. Soapy water, and then you just, especially in the corners, you just dab it. Filthy. <laughs> Filthy, and then get more like, you know, soapy water. And but they come up really well, yeah. and you only really need to wax or stain them if people are going to touch them. You can get their dirty molars all over them. Welcome to our reclamation yard. Um, we have so much stuff here. Lots of tiles, lots of bricks. We keep everything because you never know when we might need it. And I've got some terracottas here for the hearth in the bedroom of the dower house. Hope I don't find any mice or rats. So this is why you get a partner like Portia. He is cleaning up the terracotta tiles for the hearth I can't stand that job. If you're looking for a partner, find one like this. <laughs> I'm gonna add a little bit of apply to the floor. Um, it'll give a little bit more rigidity for the tiles, but also this slab here is slightly higher, just a bit. So this will level it out evenly without having to use self leveler and stuff like that. So I'm fitting the plywood down and I'm fitting it with screws, which is absolutely terrifying because there's underfloor heating under here, but I'm using the smallest screws possible. Plywood is set up. This floor is slightly unlevel, but I think we're just gonna work with it. You know, if you've got an old house <laughs> and you've got a fire, it's gonna settle as well and that. So I don't think you're gonna notice. I've just cleaned out these very, very old terracotta tiles. There's still some work to do on them, but we're just working out what the hearth is gonna look like. And I'm gonna lay them now, but I just want to make sure that I did the dry feed test at the end, just to ensure everything was gonna be exactly how I wanted it. And I think it's looking really cool. It's massive, it's, a really, it's, very, it's very big. We are installing the hearth tiles now. We're doing the opposite of what you probably should do is we're working from the front to the back. <laughs> probably gonna regret this. But it's just, we want this line to be perfect and then everything back from there. Just think all this space was just hidden behind the wall. We do have a leak in the chimney, which I guess the previous owners didn't realize because they'd blocked up the chimney. But now we've opened up the wall, it rains inside the house. So we do need to fix that. <laughs> Yummy. So it's time to put some compound on the joints. I use lime mortar. So yeah, I'm just gonna slowly start. I need to fill in all the way, so just not the surface. So I'm gonna be here for a while and then clean them all up. Every single space within the joints, then I just go over like 
that and then I will wash it all down um, so you won't see any of the mess that's currently happening. No pressure, don't spill it. No. <laughs> so this is like the cheapest, um, what is it, like a sprayer? Yeah. Get the air in it and then you can spray. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna spray and can you see it starts bubbling? Oh, okay, you keep an eye on where you're spraying it because okay. that nearly went in my face. Yeah, sorry. And now I'm just gonna start doing like that. So once I do it all, I spray it again and I do it a second time and then I will do it with water. Okay, have fun. Okay. So I finish with the brickwork and I think it looks much better. Look at the buckets, literally filthy. I am happy. It's not perfect, brickwork is not perfect, but to me it shows the path of time it shows like the character. I mean, it is a very old building. I think it's got two or 300 years old. So let's celebrate that and let's show the time that has gone through. Just received the fireplace for the bedroom. It's huge. Still recording a bullshit before he's had his coffee. He is moody! Talk to me and my coffee. Quickly drink it, drink it! Let's go and do the ensuite. I'm pumped! Sorry, Ah, oh, you just burst my eardrum. Yeah, it looks like a mess, but in no time it's gonna look really good.